loving Lord, eternal Father, we're asking you to carry us on your wings for the next few minutes, Jesus. For your message and your truth to the world, please fight this battle for us in the spiritual realm. Father, even a stupor, I could feel even on the congregants, I'm asking you, Jesus, for victory now. Right now in this moment, show yourself to be God of Israel. Defeat him again in Jesus' name. Amen. As we were saying before, that the civil war is going to lead to the time of trouble. Agreed? So therefore, we have the small time of trouble and the large time of trouble. And what we know is going to lead to a civil war, what's going to lead to the civil war? Starvation. What kind of crisis do we call this? What crisis do we call this? What crisis is starvation? Food crisis, church. You're starving because you don't have food to eat. It is a food crisis. Can we agree? What type of crisis is the starvation? But the starvation will lead to a what? A civil war. And then the civil war will lead to the great? All right. So what is the little time of trouble? All right, let's do it again. The little time of trouble comes before the great time of trouble. I'm doing it one more time. Starvation, which is a food crisis, is going to lead to what? It's going to lead to what? Civil war, church. And the civil war is going to lead to what? A great time of trouble such as never was before. Are you with me? Okay, so what's a small time of trouble? What do you call starvation? What type of crisis is that? Food crisis. That food crisis will lead to a what? A civil war. And the civil war is going to lead to what? The great time of trouble. So what's the small time of trouble? Food crisis. Food crisis. Okay? Food crisis. Are we in the small time of trouble yet? Not quite. Are we, do you see signs of building up to the small time of trouble? Because yes. the small time of trouble is what? And the food crisis is going to cause a what? And the civil war is going to lead to what? Listen to me, church. Listen, there will be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. And at that time, Daniel 12 verse 1, shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. 5, MR 305. What is the reference? 5. That's MR Manuscript release 5, page 305. Mark it down. That quote has exactly the steps by step leading to the great time of trouble. Father God, have thine own way. Great awakenings. Let me read a statement. Listen to this statement. Powerful. Great awakenings have always happened during times of moral decline, spiritual apathy, political corruption, and financial collapse. Let me do that again. Great awakening. About every 50 years, spiritual awakening has always happened when these four things are happening. Let me tell you what it is. Moral decline spiritual apathy, political corruption, and financial collapse. Now, I want to ask you a question. What's the great awakening that's coming? The great spiritual awakening that's coming. Which text would you go to? Would you go to Revelation chapter 18? Would you go to Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 2? What's going to fall, church? Talk to me. What's going to fall? Close the door and no, don't let the devil in. Come, talk to me, church. What's going to fall, church? All right, let's try it again. What's going to fall, church, in the last days? Latter rain, and that's...
think they are really backing in Project 2025? Donald Trump, if he wins the 5th of November, when will he be inaugurated? January when? 2025, and the date is the 20th. The day when they inaugurate any new president in America after the election is always the 20th of January. It doesn't matter what day it falls on. If it falls on Saturday, Sunday, that's going to be the inauguration. The 20th of January, 2025. Can I give you two scenarios? Can I give you two scenarios, church? Can I give you two scenarios in my mind? On the 5th of November, I believe anyone can win. We are not privy to the deep state and the secret society and what's happening. Can I give you in my mind, this is not a quote, in my mind, what's the possibility? If Biden wins, he continues to open the gate of LGBT and America goes down more, spiritu more spiritually. It's going to go down to the gates of hell. That's if Biden wins. Now, if he wins, he carries America deeper down to hell. Are you there with me? For the next three plus years, that's going to carry us to 2028, which is close to 2030, which means whoever comes in president that time will definitely carry us into the National Sunday Law. Because America would have been straight into the gates of hell, therefore the only thing that would be able to ever pull it back is mandated morality, which is a National Sunday Law. That's one scenario in my mind. Second scenario, Donald Trump wins. Anyone wins, it's going to create a little war at that time. I want you to mark that. But if Donald Trump wins on the 5th of November, then he's going to try and pull back America from the gates of hell, which they are presently going deeper with LGBT liberalism. Are you there with me? Therefore, if, if, which one of them is going to give Adventists less time? Trump. Trump. However, any scenario, one is quicker. Trump, he is going to want to be, he says, I'm going to give back the power to the church. If God just lets it flow, and I believe we're at that place, listen to me, church, we are going straight into the National Sunday Law. If he doesn't win, there could be the possibility of a civil war in America. And if Biden goes back, he carries them deeper into hell, which only gives us just a little more time. But anyway you take it, we don't have much time. My point is this, you ought to be ready when? No, you ought to be ready when, church? Now, let me make something clear. Great awakening as it relates to the latter rain always happen and comes every other 50 or something like that with four scenarios. Moral decline, spiritual apathy, political corruption, and financial collapse. Where are we in the four? Let me ask you the question. Is there moral decline? Okay. Is there spiritual apathy? You know what apathy means? Debt. Is there spiritual debt? All right. Is there political corruption? Yes, so only one thing left to happen, and that's a total what? Financial collapse. Oh, church, we are so near. We are so near, a civil war will lead to the time of trouble. I was shown a startling fact. Let's deal with that. The startling fact. You know what is a startling fact? I was shown a startling fact. Ellen White says in one of her, not the very last, but in one of her last vision, Holy Spirit have thine own way, sweet Jesus. I was shown a startling fact that but a small portion of those who now profess the truth will be sanctified by it. How many? A little bit. Jamaican say a little bit. She used the English, she saw a small amount. Jamaican say a little bit. Will be sanctified by the truth. Are you there with me? It says they will be sanctified by the truth that they profess and be saved. Many will get above the simplicity of the work. They will conform to the world, cherish idols, and become spiritually dead. She died 1915, prophetess of the Lord. We are in 2025. That's 110 years after. Listen to me. Let me ask the question. Have we gotten above the simplicity of the work? Are Seventh-day Adventists generally today spiritually dead? We are living in the startling fact. We are living in the startling fact. You want me to tell you why I say better be a world in? Let me read something to you. Let me read something to you. She says, the humble, self-sacrificing followers 
sorry, of Jesus will pass on to perfection. That's the very few, to perfection, leaving behind the inhabitants and the indifferent and lovers of the world. What did the servant say in Luke? He says, my Lord, delay it, his coming, I'm going to eat and drink with the whirling, and I'm going to smite the manservant and the maidservant, and the Lord shall come at an hour, at a time when he does not expect it. Hear me, church, and he shall cut him into pieces is he a server of God based on the text of course yes and no I understand let me ask it another way is he a church man oh yes oh yes oh yes because it says my servant and and he says my Lord delay it is coming can I put it to you that today in 2024, we're talking about our church brethren and Seventh-day Adventists. Now, when it says the Lord shall come in an hour when he doesn't expect it, what is one of the main things as Seventh-day Adventists, if you're spiritually connected, that you should know the coming of the Lord? Do you know the exact day and the exact month? No. But when it comes to the time of trouble and we're going through that last period, will God tell us the exact day, the exact month? Yes. But do we know now? But do we have an idea? Yes. Are we close? Yes. The signs of the time are telling everywhere. That comes from, listen to me church, Testimonies to the Church, Volume 1, page 608, paragraph 3. Let me speak to the young and let me speak to the old. Forgive my speed. Listen to me church, hear me now. Young and old, God is now testing you. God is now doing what? God is now testing you. He's now testing you. You are deciding your own eternal destiny, church. Your pride, God is testing you, young and old. Your pride, your love to follow the fashions of the world, your vain and empty conversation, your selfishness are all put in the scale and the weight of evil is fearfully against you. You know the old time scale? It was like this. It was balanced and there were two scale. If it's too heavy, if it's too, yeah. Let me tell you something. The worldliness is building up. Young and old. I wish our young people, when church is over and they gather to talk, they would talk about the Bible. But alas, they talk about tablet, they talk about device, they talk about this, they talk about that. And yet still, you know what's sad? You, many of you won't get to our age. You know why? Because you're going to meet the time of trouble as young as many of you are, or a little more years added on, and you don't get the message that we're trying to get you ready, and dog go and yam your supper if you don't listen. Parents, let me encourage you. Let me encourage you, if you do your best, follow what God says, even when they think it's slavery, and stay on that path, even if they are lost, you will be saved. Let me do that again. Let me do that again. Parents, if you do your best, because let me ask you a question, can God force? Do we all have our individuality? Even when two become one, does the testimony says that the two still have their own individuality uh-huh so does your child have their own individuality you must fight with them strive with them to glory but is it possible that parents will be saved and children will be lost is it possible that children will be saved and parents will be lost you need to choose and when I say you the parents can't choose for you the parents can try but you have to choose for yourself and then work with the parent Young and old, God is now testing you. You are deciding your own eternal destiny. You know what's the difference with present truth? You know what I love about present truth? When we say God is coming soon, we don't just leave it there. No, no. We go into the word, we go into the testimony, and we show you step by step how close we are. Don't we do that? Tell me if we don't do that. Don't we do that, church? So when we at present truth says the coming of the Lord is near, shouldn't it have more impression on your mind than when you were just in the building and said, Jesus will come, Jesus will come. What does that mean? Are we showing you step by step? 
Civil war in the air. Are we showing you step by step? Moneyed men control the market. Are we showing you step by step? Starvation will come soon. Are we even showing you the countries to look in? Are we showing you civil war is near, which is a starvation, which is a small time of trouble, and that will lead into the large time of trouble. We are so near. I've gone into the politics of America, which we must study the cities of America. That's what the quote says. And what are the other three nations? Come, let's go. And let's go. And let's go. Yes, we already I had mentioned the cities of America. That's what we're talking about here, church. You're deciding your eternal destiny. Father God, sweet Holy Spirit, have thine own way. Control now. Bring us to the end safely. In Jesus' name. Listen to me, church. Hear me, church, what I'm trying to say to you uh, this afternoon. Uh, listen to me. Satan is trying to let you lose your eternity. God is testing you. Your pride, your love to follow fashions of the world, your vain, empty conversation, your selfishness are all put in the scale, and the weight of evil is fearfully against you. You are poor and miserable. Revelation chapter 3, and blind and naked while evil is increasing and taking in deep root it is choking choking the good seed which has been sown in the heart which is the word of Almighty God. Soon the word that was given concerning Eli's house will be spoken to the angels of God concerning your house, concerning your sins and mine. If we don't repent, shall not it shall not be purged with sacrifice, your, 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 nor offering forever. I saw there were flattering. Let me, let me read this to you. When I read this, it was chilling. It was chilling. Holy Spirit, have thine own way. It was chilling. Hear this. I saw they were flattering themselves that they were good Christians who have not a single ray of light from Jesus. You hear that? They're flattering themselves that they're good Christian. I don't know who them is, you know. But may I make a statement? They're flattering themselves that they're good Christians and they don't even have a ray of light from Jesus. Not even one single ray. They know not what it is to be, re, 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 to be saved or renewed by the grace of God. They have, church, no living experience for themselves in the things of God. And I saw that the Lord was wetting his sword. Lord have mercy. They have themselves as good Christians and they don't even have a, a light of ray from Jesus. And the prophetess says, I saw Jesus was wetting his sword. Hallelujah. He might wet it. What Jesus a wet sword for? Ezekiel chapter 9. Go through the city and, and seal those who sigh and cry for the abomination. But those who are not sighing and crying, cut them down. God a wet him sword. He might wet it. Hallelujah. I just said I want to preach. Hallelujah, sweet Jesus, holy father, have thine own way. Wet it. He's wetting his sword in heaven to cut them down oh that every lukewarm professor could realize the clean work that god is about to make amongst his professed people he's wetting his sword testimonies to the church volume one page 189 paragraph two god is wetting his sword I'm right there in the message. Better be a wordling. Where are you talking about, Pastor? Let me read this to you. Better be a wordling than a common, cheap, professed Christian. Oh, oh you, you heard what I just read? It's better you be a wordling than a common, cheap Christian. Why? Because when you're a common, cheap Christian, you're in the church, you hear the word, and the stripes are going to be many. So I better you be a wordling. You'll get less lick. Come on the grounds of holiness and play with God. Better be a worldly and it's better you be a worldly than a common, cheap, professed Christian. Dare to come and from out from the world and be separate. Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to be singular because you love Jesus better than the world and righteousness with 
with, 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 with persecution better than disobedience with worldly prosperity. Holy and entire obedience through dependence upon the Lord Jesus Christ will strengthen the soul to be steadfast in the faith and hope of the gospel that I may know him, page 318, paragraph 3. I'm closing up. I'm filled with sadness when I think of our condition as a people. Holy Spirit, God, this is your work, your church, your message. Bring it to the end. I am filled with sadness when I think of our condition as a people. The Lord has not closed heaven to us, but our own course of continual backsliding has separated us from God, pride, pride, covetousness, and love of the world have lived in the heart without fear of banishment or condemnation. Grievous and presumptuous sins have dwelt among us and yet the general opinion is that the church is flourishing and that there is peace and spiritual prosperity in all our borders. Testimonies to the church. Volume 5, page 217, paragraph 1. Hear me from the word of God if you know the truth. But man rather darkness, John, than light. John chapter 3. The heavenly principles that distinguish those who who are one with Christ, John 15, from those who are one with the world, 1 John 2, verses 15 to 17, have become almost indistinguishable. You know what that means? You can't look upon a Christian nowadays and know them different from a worldly. When you close tight, when you breast a shoe, when you tie out, when you bottom a perk out, everything out, naked, physically and naked, spiritually. And the men, your words, corrupting words, your mouth, the men. Church, the heavenly principles that distinguish us are almost indistinguishable. The professed followers, church, the professed followers, the professed followers of Christ, the professed followers of Christ, let's come out. Let's come down. The professed followers of Christ are no longer a separate and peculiar people. The line of demarcation, of separation, is indistinct. The people are subordinating themselves to the world, to its practices, its custom, its selfishness. The church has gone over to the world in transgression of the law when the world should have come over to the church in obedience to the law. Daily! From 1863, daily to 2024, daily the church is being converted to the world. That's a lot of daily. Christ Object Lesson, page 315, paragraph 3. I'm going to read something to you. We're talking about God's affliction. And I'm going to warn you and encourage you not to let it happen to you. I'm going to read a counsel about a sister. And wherever that sister is, her name is not mentioned. Put yourself there. I can put myself there. I'm talking about God's affliction. Are you ready? Let's listen to this. Sister T loves this world. Listen what God did. Hmm? She is naturally selfish. That's one of the things when you love the world, you're selfish. She's naturally selfish. She has suffered much with bodily infirmities. God permitted this affliction to come upon her and yet would not permit Satan to take her life. If you continue to be worldly, God will make you sick. God will afflict you and Satan can kill you and you just dead and sick. God will lick you down the hospital in the love of God. He'll do it to save your soul. If you're worldly, turn. If you love the world, turn. If you're selfish, turn. If you don't turn, God won't turn you. God allowed affliction to come upon her. But he did not permit Satan to take her life. God designed through the furnace of affliction to loosen her grasp upon earthly treasure. I saw your hand tight. I will hand on it. God will loosen that. The time I wrap up, you know, God work of your aggressive. God work of your aggressive. When I think you have 50, 30, 20, God will loosen that grip there with sickness. God will make your finger can't even close. God! 
God will deaf you, God will dumb you, God will blind you, you know, same something in the Bible. Eh? God allows Samson to lose him sight. Eh? When John, when John's father uh, wasn't listening to God, God said, all right, take where you talk. Eh? Him dumb until John was born. He got back his speech. Uh, these things I'm telling you are biblical. God will afflict you to save you. And God now watch age. God will seek you. God will allow affliction to loosen your grasp upon earthly treasures. Through suffering alone could this be done. You hear how the only way God could have reached Sister T? Through suffering alone. Are you that this morning? Will God have you afflict you? Why not hear the lonely preacher's voice and turn? Think is me reject is God. There is much talking. I'm, I'm, I'm coming down now to giving Satan employment. And I'm talking to women. I'm coming down. I'm going to talk to you, my sisters, my mothers, aunts, and grandmas. Many of you are giving Satan. You know why employment? Work! Oh, if you have Satan work. Pastor, where are you? Why are you where? Oh, you, you're giving Satan work. I saw it in 2022. You guys know what I'm talking about. Satan get wallop of work. And his woman is the major cause. Let's talk about this. There is much talking. Are you listening to me? There is much talking. I told you before I preached it to you that even though the Bible didn't delineate it and specifically spoke to it, the reason that Moses' sister Miriam got struck and not Aaron because she started it. Woman, chat too much. No talk too much sometime. Listen what it says. Listen to the spirit of prophecy if you won't hear me. There is much talking which is sinful. Which is what? Sinful and should be avoided. It should be avoided. I'm not done. She should set a strict watch before the door of her lips. The door of her what? Her is male or female. Her is male or female. The mouth problem is a woman problem. And when man have that problem, them lose testosterone. Because a man is not supposed to have that issue. But sin is sin. Listen, she should set a door of her lips and keep her tongue as with a bridle. You know a bridle? You put it on the dog mouth and rock out on them back. Rock out on them do nothing. No useless. Pay nice on me. Why they can't bite you? Bridle your tongue. He says, put a bridle upon your tongue that her words may not work wickedness. That Miriam words do. Wickedness. God said, we are dealing with. Take some leprosy. What to you? I humble yourself. Humble! And Moses said, no, make you move. Mercy upon her. Say, so think of Moses, you are dealing with me. Take leprosy. Take it. And suffer under some pain. Don't let God deal with you like that. Nobody has a no boss, including me, a servant. She should set a strict watch upon her mouth that her words may not work wickedness. She should cease talking of others' faults. What? Oh, Jesus, mercy upon us, Lord. Mercy upon your church, Jesus. Father, if you leave us, we will be lost. Save us, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Listen to me, church. She should cease talking of others' faults. Listen, dwelling upon others' peculiarities and discovering others' infirmities. Such conversation is censurable in any person. Giving Satan employment. Stop giving Satan work. Stop game work. You know what? Mess up workplace more time. Most workplace have mostly women. And that type problem. If them been dad, them yard to her place would have better. Chat too much. Gossip too much. 
Them chatting at the morning and gossip. And when they get lunchtime, they go feed on the gossip. Then watch. Then watch. What them? them so many them? Days of our life and young and reckless. I say it name. And what them so many them? Generation. Generational curse that you want to call it. All them foolish. Them know all of them. And then they go back after lunch and go do that again. Where they get from it from where they watch. I used to work at a place and the boss was a woman. Boss must always be men. Women were not born to lead. You were born to raise children into the glory and honor of God. That's biblical. When you put woman in a leadership position, Isaiah said, woman become the leaders and children they teach. A problem! I say, what the boss used to do, you know? And I'm mostly woman work at the place. You know? One woman would have come in, you know? And tell her something about her next lady, you know? She just call the next lady down, you know? I say, you know, say, Andrea, tell me, say, you're that Lord of mercy. I want you to do that No, When you do that no, Andrea, go up, Andrea, and I want to talk, and they work in the same department. Woman. Then mouth. Then tongue. Listen, 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 listen to this as we come down. It is, it is, it is unprofitable and positively sinful. It tends only to evil. It tends only to what? Evil. The enemy knows that if this course is pursued by Christ's professed followers, it is opening a door for him to work. Opening a door for him to do what? Work. Una Satan employment. That's from Testimonies to the Church, Volume 2, page 185. Listen to me as I come down. I saw that when sisters, watch this, watch this. I saw that when sisters, that's plural, sisters who are given to talk. Uh -huh. I saw that when they get together, Satan is generally present, for he finds employment. He finds what? The woman at the well. Why do you think she got midday in the sun? A two-time woman, a man no go well go catch water. A woman do that. They are domestic. They, they do domestic duty. You need water to cook, water to wash, water to clean. A woman do that. Man no go well go catch water. Why do you think the woman at the well went midday? A two-time them go catch water well. In the morning when the sun no come up because they have to walk far and it's cool. And in the afternoon when the sun go down. She go midday when the sun hot. Thank God. No woman never did it but Jesus was. Copy your gossip and go on. Them start chatter. From where down there, them say, see those band teeth for cover. Them start chatter. How much man she married? Yes, she married last week. Let me say it again. Let's read it again. I saw that when sisters who are given to talk get together, Satan is generally present for he finds employment. He stands by to excite the mind and make the most of the advantage he has gained. He knows that all this gossip and tale bearing and revealing of secrets and dissecting of character separate the soul from God. I want to close. Contemplate the cross of Christ, church. It is death to spirituality. And, uh, uh, and destroys religious influence. It is death to spirituality and a calm religious influence, church. And she was talking about a sister. She said, sister you, just put yourself right there. She said, sister you, sins greatly with her tongue. With her what? Tongue. Testimonies to Church, volume 2, page 185. This world will appear of but little value. Let's close. Contemplate the cross of Christ. This world will appear of but little value, church, to those who appreciate the great price of man's redemption, the precious blood of God's dear son. All the riches of this world are not of sufficient value to redeem the perishing soul who can measure the love of Christ felt 
for a lost world as he hung upon the cross suffering for the sins of guilty man. Church, this love was immeasurable. It was infinite. Jesus died for your sins and my sins. The more we contemplate the cross of Christ, the more fully shall we adopt the language of the apostle when he said, this is Galatians 6 and verse 14 as I close, God forbids that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. I will glory only in the cross of Jesus Christ. Bless the name of the Lord. Carry to the end, Jesus. Watch. Accumulated light. Did you get it? Light upon light. Knowledge upon knowledge. But man rather darkness. Because their deeds are evil. Accumulated light. A civil war will lead to the time of trouble. That's where I spent most of my time. Did you get it? Do you understand it? All right. The startling fact. What's a startling fact? One of the visions. What's a startling fact? That but very few. How much? Very few would be sanctified by the truth. Listen, church. Better be a worldling. Why? Better be a worldling than a what? Common, cheap Christian. Can you agree with that statement? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God's affliction. Do you get it? God will afflict you to save you. God will afflict you. Giving Satan employment. You going to still employ him or you going to fire him today? Are you firing him or giving him more gainful employment? How do you give him employment, church? Let me see if you get it, church. How do you give him employment, church? Tail bearing, gossiping, talking, mouth, tongue. Contemplate the cross of Christ. I will glory, church, in the cross. In the cross. When you contemplate Jesus and his suffering. Isaiah chapter 53. You will glory in the cross. Let's close. Mountain pressure. WHO urges country to sign globalist pandemic treaty by May. They're pressuring the countries to sign it. What is in that treaty? By when? May. We're, March is done. Today's the 30th. They have April and May. A new threat will, em, will emerge. How do they know that? A new threat? So they're saying you need to sign the treaty so countries can work together. A new threat will emerge. You know, you know that pandemic separates themselves by 100 years? It should outlive him. And he said a new threat will emerge. Uh, what are they planning? Huh? The pressuring, mountain pressure church, the urge by the World Health Organization for countries to sign on to its pandemic accord comes after conservative MP Leslie Lewis warned provisions contained in the document would give the globalist group unreasonable power over Canadian citizens. That's what it's going to do. Underline words in a March 20 press release, the World Health Organization called for, or we can call it the World Hell, Hell Organization called for accelerated progress from countries joining their proposed treaty. The pandemic accord, which critics such as conservative MP Leslie Lewis have warned, would give the WHO increased power over Canada in the event of another pandemic or other so-called emergencies. Not just Canada, but every country. And now I want to ask a question. I wonder if, Amer if Jamaica signed it. I don't know, I don't know. You tell me. You tell me. Mountain pressure, there they are. Those who are controlling the lives of the world. WHO member states agreed to resume negotiations aimed at finalizing the world's first pandemic agreement. Well, I do agree. WHO member states agreed to resume negotiations aimed at finalizing a pandemic agreement during 29th of April to the 10th of May. Okay? The decision came at today's end of two weeks of intensive country-led discussions on critical subjects aimed at making all countries of the world better prepared for and able to effectively and equitably respond to future pandemics. They're planning something. They're going to trap the countries. 
Listen to me. We have to get out of the cities. This ninth meeting of the Intergovernmental Negotiating Body, INB9, started on the 18th of March and ended today. It says, government negotiators discussed all articles from the draft agreement, including adequate financing for pandemic preparedness, equitable access to medical countermeasures needed during pandemics and health workforce. Church, read later. U.S. government orders Google to identify who watched certain YouTube video. Mountain pressure. Why do they want to know that? Do you know, do you know if you watch a lot of religious program, when you're scrolling on YouTube, you're going to see a lot of religious program. It's like they're saying, we see you, we know what you watch, and we are suggesting. I wonder if they have a database with our names tied to whatever we follow. And they will know how to pick out the troublemakers. Let's read this. Forbes writes that it has had access to several orders that name certain YouTube videos, citing one unsealed case in Kentucky regarding people who viewed content posted by someone whom law enforcement suspects of money laundering. Watch this. Watch this. If he's doing money laundering, that's illegal. Can we agree? So he's an enemy. So if people watch his content, then probably they are a part of it. Can you understand the reasoning? But they're going to go from that to something else. Hate speech, breaking the hate law. That man, um, they call him Pastor Lecky. That man, his content is like that. Let's see who watch him. Let's cut his channel and cut them too. Mounting pressure. You don't even know what's coming, do you? It says U.S. federal law enforcement and courts have gone a step further in the extreme efforts they are making to surveil people's activity line, including on Google's vast platform. The latest is that the tech giant gets orders to identify all people who happen to be watching certain videos or live streams on YouTube. It starts good, but it's going to spread. After directly censoring creators and channels, giving ge geolocation data of its users to the authorities in response to the controversial geofencing warrants, this is a new example of how Google can be used and abused in dragnet-style investigation. So it can be used, but it can also be what? Abused, okay? March 26, 2024, today is the 30th, Baltimore Key Bridge collapses after ship collision. Did you see the video? I wondered about that. I don't want to be an extremist. Let me, let, me, let me talk to you a little. I don't want to be an extremist. I don't want to be that person that thinks that everything has a connection to something. Most things, but not Every single detail thing. I don't want to be that person that every time something happens, we bring up a, a, a Simpsons video. Because a lot of those Simpsons videos are what you see is not even real. So you have to be careful in this society. But I wondered about this event. I saw the video and I, it hit directly one of the columns. If it had went through, the bridge, probably part of it would. But the whole bridge dropped in the water. About eight people went down. Two rescued one released from hospital, others not found as yet. You know, you know those bridge goes, they don't go over some little river like Jamaica. I think of Jamaica this, or some body of water, if you drop in night, I'll know, I'll tomorrow in a reach the bottom. Big bodies of water. They have not found, and you know the waves and the currents going to carry bodies here and there. Are you there with me? They have not found. But I wondered, you know why I wondered about this event? That's the major bridge in Baltimore in Maryland, and when it collapses, supplies are going to cut off, and we're talking about millions of dollars in loss. Does that sound like a smoke that has a fire? They said the light went out of the, the ship just before it co collided. They're not sure what happened. I get a little eerie when I hear, we're not sure what happened. The great America... It says, crew member on Dali said everyone on board was safe hours after bridge collapse. Official says, a crew member on the Dali cargo ship sent a message hours after the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed Tuesday saying everybody on board was safe according to apostleship of the sea director Andy Middleton. 
In the, in the red line there, it says, I was able to reach out to a crew member very early this morning, around 5 a.m. Eastern Time or 6 a.m., and get a message to them asking if they were okay. He said that crew members responded within just a few minutes, advising that the crew was safe and everybody that was on board was safe. People was on the bridge working from Guatemala and other places. There is a picture. There is that bridge across that body of water, the ship. Big collapse right there in the middle. Listen to me. It says in a red box, six people who were believed to be a part of a road construction crew presumed dead. After Baltimore's Francis Scott Bridge collapsed early Tuesday morning, the collapse came at 984 foot cargo ship. Uh, after a, sorry, after a 984 foot, that's a big, nine, eight, that's a big, that's, that's big ship. Cargo ship hit the bridge pillar. I'm going to say this. You never see smoke without fire. Watch me, watch me now. Let's watch the following days. Because sometimes as these things unravel, you finally see the fire that caused the smoke. Do you understand what I'm saying? We'll keep it in mind. Let's move forward. Time is going. Watch this now. Digitization of, at RGD linked to NIDS project. What is RGD? Register General Department. Birth certificate. Death certificate. Adoption papers. Are you there with me? Still birth. Um, records. That's baby who is born dead. RGD. It says the massive digitization project being undertaken by the Register General's Department will assist with the transition to the National Identification System needs. The RGD recently disclosed at the GIS, that's Jamaica Information Service, think tank that it will be moving to digitize more than 2.4 million records. That's almost all of Jamaica. As part of its modernization process, these include birth birth, marriage, debt, adoption, stillbirth certificate. Chief Executive Officer the RGD Charlton McFarley noted that the undertaking is being funded by the NIDS project. The digitization is linked to NIDS. In fact, it is a NIDS project through the Office of the Prime Minister that is actually financing the digitization of records at the RGD, McFarlane said. Let's look at a few things. Let's look at the good. It's good to go digitization. Good to get rid of paper. It, it keeps the record easily accessible. Such great information for Jamaica. You can't lose it if the place burned down. You can always access it back if it's in the World Wide Web or it's in the cloud. Are you there with me? But what could be a negative? You are tracked down. You are fully known where you are, everything. Listen to me. These needs program that's modernizing Jamaica is going to work against God's people. Yet, let's make it clear. Needs, needs is not the mark of the beast. I heard a preacher that's doing a crusade, I think they finished today in Portmore, says, Nids is not the mark of the beast and it has nothing to do with the mark of the beast. He gets a tick for the first point, but gets a wrong bong for the second point. It does have something to do with the mark of the beast, but it is not the mark of the beast. But the mark of the beast is a system. You have the money of the beast, the number of the beast, it's a whole system. This whole digitization is going to fuel into the new world order system. Do you follow me, church? All right, you still... All right, let's close up. Farmers, farmers in India are using AI for agriculture. Here's how they could inspire the world. Red box, Subst su subsistence farmers in countries like India battle extreme weather and financial desperation to support their families. The AI for Agriculture Innovation Initiative held workshops with farmers in India to find out how to help them access the AI tools they need to farm more efficiently and earn more. And then it says the initiative transformed the chill farming for many in Kamam district India with bot advisory services that, that's bot, like chat bot, right? Bot advisory services, AI-based quality testing, and a digital platform to connect buyers and sellers, buyers and sellers, buyers and sellers. Digital platform, connect buyers and sellers. Revelation 13, cannot buy, cannot sell. Listen to me, participating farmers reported that they doubled their income. Let me make it plain. AI is going to work. 
AI is going to start out well. The people are going to lick their fingers and love it. But those who know prophecy, we know the end. Can you agree? We know the end. Let's try and close up. All right, time is gone. Pope Francis washes feet of 12 women, continuing 2006 innovation in Holy Thursday liturgy. Yesterday, they call it Easter Friday. That have nothing to do with church, nothing to do with Jesus' death, nothing to do with Christianity. Easter Friday, a paganism, something that. And then Sunday, they're going to call it Holy Sunday, a paganism. All of Easter, a paganism. We are not tricked. We know the truth. Watch him washing people's foot. Him not only wash the foot, him kiss them too. Then if you have man to wash your foot and kiss it, you know, just follow him, go to glory or hell. This is how he woos people in. The Pope of Rome. Are you there with me? You're not supposed to wash nobody's foot and kiss it. Oh no, oh no. We washed foot last week. Male washing male, woman washing woman. He changed the custom. He's washing all women's foot and watch him in the chair. His wheelchair, I mean, I know. Him time a wrap up. Prophecy soon finish. It says, in a ceremony held in Rome's Rebibia, women's prison, Pope Francis performed the mandatum or washing of feet for Maud D. For Maud D. Thursday. But it is believed that it is the first time the 12 people were all women. First time. So, it's coming, church. The Christian reaction to Trump's Bible endorsement goes deeper than you think. Trump is selling Bibles. Takes a picture, hold his Bible. Trump is selling. I saw an advertisement, and it, me and my wife was watching it and looking at each other, smiling. Man, that advertisement, that, that promotion on YouTube, huh. I'm telling you, they, 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 there he is with the Bible. There is with the Bible. He is touted as the savior of America. Can you imagine? It's, it's funny, isn't it? Trump, the woman swinging Trump, the uh, woman. There he is. Christian man, Trump. Bible selling man, Trump. America saving man, Trump. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Sacrilege, theology, and the shadow of Christian nationalism. Says former president Red Box Donald Trump is officially selling a patriotic copy of the Christian Bible theme to Lee Greenswood famous song God Bless the USA. Happy Holy Week, Trump announced on social media Tuesday during the most solemn period of the Christian calendar, the last week of the Lenten season, marking the suffering and death of Jesus. That's not the truth. That's paganism. You're marking the suffering and death of Tammuz. As we lead into Good Friday and Easter, I encourage you to get a copy of the God Bless the USA Bible. And the people say, yes, Trump, Trump, MAGA, MAGA. You know what's MAGA, right? Make America great again. Church, we are watching. EU governments back human rights and environmental due diligence law for supply chains. You can read that. Time is going. We're closing up. Listen to me. Fulton, angered by JDF's role at Nokalva Polytech College. He's angry because the soldiers are at the school. They say this will help the school. This will help the students. They can recruit people into the army. They are looking at the situation in the school. It's getting bad. Let's join the military with the school and the students. And I say homeschool. I say what? Homeschool. Mountain pressure. As I close, let me make it clear to you. Many things we are doing today is life and death. Country living, life and death. It's what? Life and death. Homeschooling your children because of where the schools reach today is life and death. And, I, and in, in the case of the school, I'm not just talking physical, spiritual death, but it can possibly be also what? Physical death. I hear that a JC student, I don't know if they were robbing him and was stabbed and the knife nicked his liver and that's during the champs fiasco. I have never been to champs. What you say, boring? Well, um, what they say, what the statement say? Calm man keeps sound bone. That's how it go. Coward. Well, I ain't no coward. I can't use that statement. But, church, we're in the end of time. The message is clear. We need to make personal decisions for Jesus. Amen? Let's pray. Let's close.
Loving Lord, Eternal Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the victory we won today. We won Jesus. There was a disruption, but we won. We overcame. Bless the name of the Lord. Could have felt that the enemy was moving in some sense as I, as I, I felt even from the congregants and I knew that there was a spiritual battle. A door was open, but thank God you closed it. Father, we can't win this, but we know that you'll fight for us. Praise your holy name. Now, Lord, as your message has gone forward, may it bless the hearts of your people here and around the world, O oh God. Save us, for without you we are totally lost. Father, as we go on the streets today to minister, may you be with us. But as we pause now to partake of physical food, may you bless the hands of those who provide. May it do good to us, O oh Father, and as we fellowship today, bless us, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.